Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Rob here. Today we're gonna to talk about the Court Core Series Mahogany Solid Body Guitar with a Fishman Sonotone preamp, bone, nut, and saddle, and uh, beautiful die cast, unbranded tuners with some interesting metal buttons. We're gonna be talking about all that today on this Rob Reviews video. So if you like that, don't forget to stick around. Friends, you know that sometimes I like to bring you something a little bit different to the channel, and I think this is it. I enjoy guitars. It works very well with what I do specifically you don't recall Chris West in 2022, new for 2022. So gigging and playing out at some places is pretty interesting. And that's something that we've added to the lineup for our DJ and live sound and event setups and service that we have, which is, which is actually really quite cool. I think it's great. Uh, as we continue, we're gonna talk about this guitar, but I want you to know that nothing that you see here is sponsored. I don't have a review or any kind of relationship with Court. If they ever send me a guitar to review, I'll let you know. Second thing is, if you hear that, there is a lot of that going on today, and it's just the way that it is. I live by an airport. They've got planes flying, and I can't do much about it right now other than record at a different time. And that's not happening. Today, I'm actually going to be recording using the Tascam Porter Capture X8 and their medium diaphragm condenser mics that are on there. They're 15, 14 and a half millimeter microphone capsules. They're going to capture the quartz natural sound very, very well. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm also using a wireless lab for me, and I'll mix them in post. Although we have a Fishman Sonotone pickup in here, right, I am not going to be using any of the electric sounds out of this pickup for this particular review. I'll save that for another one. So if you want to see it, let me know in the links down below or in the comments down below. And finally, if you find any of this helpful and you are enjoying it or anything like that, please don't forget to use the Amazon links down below because they'll help me create more content and stuff like this. It will not cost you anything extra, but I'll get a little bit of a kickback. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, here we go. And as you guys might recall, this is the second video in a series. So if you saw the first one, uh, this is the second one. Listen to that E chord ring out. This guitar's got some punch to it. All right, friends, let's talk about some of the appointments over here. We've got an Ovan call, fretboard, and bridge. We've got a bone, nut, and saddle, right? Which is really nice. I gotta talk about this fretboard for a second. I'm gonna bring it up front so that you can see. Beautiful fretboard, okay? Ovan call, real nice. Notice the sides. It almost appears to be bound. Well, it's not. They've just dyed or stained the, the ends of the board at a different color than the body and the top. They've also taken the task to roll the edge of the fretboard, which is really nice. Now, the frets themselves aren't rolled, as you can see, but they're not sharp either. And they do not protrude with fret route anywhere past the edge of the fingerboard. And in fact, you can see that the tangs, the part of the fret that extends into the fingerboard, is actually clipped, right? Which is really nice. Okay. So all in all, a really, really nice looking fretboard. And we've got side dart markers as well, which is cool as it can be. I like it. When we talk about the heel down here, look at the heel. Heel's put together very nicely, okay? Uh, and we've got this plastic ABS black binding that goes around the entire guitar with one white strip of purfling on the top, but around the back and sides, that white strip is gone. I think that adds for a little bit of character. It's nice. In there, of course, you can see that Fishman Sonotone pickup, which is really nice and then this bright burst finish. Now the bright burst finish is actually an open pour finish. They call it a bright burst, but it's really a shaded edge. <laughs> Everybody's got their own names, man. You tell me. But if you'll notice the top of the guitar has some nice striping on it, which is really, 
Really dead to rights, I like it. There's a little bit of figure on the back, but not much. There's kind of a bit of flame, especially in the daylight sun outside, but it's very, very light. Book matching seems to be done quite well on both the top and the bottom. Looking around the sides of the guitar, I can see zero workmanship or craftsman errors like that. And I see we've got our strap button as well as an offset jack for our pickup. It's nice that the battery is over here as well because then, well, it doesn't really weight the guitar in a funny kind of way. This guitar itself is actually really, really nice and light. I like it for that reason quite a bit. When I was looking at the bridge before, I'd noticed that Cork builds the bridges very, very, very big, right? And I can talk to you about the particular setup that I did with this guitar, but just know that when I got this guitar, I did set up the bridge, which meant I did shave some from the bridge in order to get it down a little bit more, as well as I took some from the saddle, some height that is, and I needed it. Uh, if you guys don't know why, I'll tell you about that in just a second after we do a little bit more play. Used to chase that Georgia freight, just a couple kids in a Chevrolet. Catch a little air when we cross the tracks, sitting on some from a paper sack. Hang your shirt on a maple limb, right around the corner by the river bend. Just another minute, I'll be jumping in, I'll be jumping in. I'm, I'm chasing you like a shot of whiskey, burning, going down, b -b burning, going down. I'm chasing you like those goodbye tail lights. Heading west to anywhere from this nowhere town Chasing that feeling, chasing that freedom It's gone too soon Chasing that you and me I will not see in my rear view I'm lying here in bed I'm holding someone new I'm chasing you Yeah, I'm chasing you I'm still chasing you I'm still chasing you You used to talk about L.A. Heard you made it out to Santa Fe Used to try and track it down Only made it out to Guitar Town Singing about a girl that I once know Used to know, I want you to know I won't give it up on you I'm just on your radio I'm chasing you Like a shot of whiskey Burning, going down but burning going down I'm chasing you Like a goodbye tail line Heading west to anywhere from this nowhere town I'm chasing that freedom, chasing that feeling It's gone too soon I'm chasing that you and me out see my rear view I'm lying here in bed I'm holding someone new I'm still chasing you 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 All right, so what about the guitar? Uh, when I got this guitar, I got it off the wall from, of course, Guitar Center. And this is very important. As you'll know, I had an issue, so I bought the original guitar from Guitar Center, paid for it with my own money. And I got it home after a few days, I noticed something that I just couldn't keep with me. And that was that there was some bridge lift in the back. Now this, is, this could be common depending on the manufacturer and things like that. But out of all the workmanship, if you saw the stuff that I saw in the first video and then seeing the the bridge lift when I found that a couple days later, I just wasn't having it. And since Guitar Center has a 45 day return period in any per place where you purchase a guitar, I would suggest you make sure they've got a good return period. I took it back. Now, when I took it back, it was a simple process. Guitar Center I've heard has been crazy in the past. My experience was one that was really easy. I just took the guitar in, explained what the problem was. We did an even exchange, no problem. The problem that I had, if there was a problem after saying problem like four times in a row, is that there was not another new inbox sealed guitar, which meant that I got the one hanging on the wall. Now, Guitar Center did offer to order me one, and I could have ordered, or I could have upgraded to a different guitar and just paid the difference. It didn't really matter. But that being the case, when I purchased this guitar, I just got the one off the wall. So it was an even exchange for the one off the wall. Now, that being the case, I uh, checked out Court and found out when this guitar was made. So here's the deal. The first two numbers, 21, 20, 19, 18, equals your year it was produ produced. The next two numbers, 0, 01, 02, 11, or 12, equals the month. And then there are other numbers, who knows? Zoology, I guess. But this one was made in January of 2021, which meant that by the time I purchased it, it was already 18 months old. 
which means that Guitar Center has had this guitar hanging on their wall for at least a year that it's been in their inventory. And that means that a lot of people have played it. And that means that it had been, the strings were all janky, uh, stuff like that. Now, when I buy a guitar, I always do a setup on my guitar, so that's no problem. You should as well. But the more expensive you of a guitar you get, generally the better out-of-the-box setup it comes. I did not get to get this experience. Although I took the first court back out of the box, it was set up very nice, and I only needed a slight truss rod adjustment to get my action right where I want it. I like my action at the 12th fret right around to, um, to be right around uh, 4 and 5 64ths. On this one, I'm at 6 and 5 64ths on the bass and treble, respectively. That seems to be where this guitar wants to be, and that's all the adjustment I'm going to do with it right now. I'll continue to work on it as I, as I go through and and finally get the strings that I want put on it and everything else like that. These are different strings than what it comes with, but the, uh, the Diodario XJ16s are the one that it comes with out of the box, which are great strings and they're not tuned at all. So they're just on, you tune them up, they're good to go. Uh, these right here are the nickel bronze and I think that the nickel bronze is really bright and jangly. I think for me, I really like the silk and silver wound or the steel and silver wound by Diodario because it just adds a smoother sweetness, mellow, very compliments, a finger play style, a little bit of strumming, and a mahogany body guitar. In any event, when I got this guitar, with all of that being said, I had to do quite a bit of setup, right? And that's where the nut comes in, the truss rod adjustment comes in, the saddle comes in, all those things I had to set up. But once I got it set up, everything was playing right, and that's normal. The experience out of the box that I had as compared to the one hanging on the wall when it comes to setup was night and day. So don't let me talking about the setup for the guitar I bought off the wall change the fact that the first guitar I got, even though I returned it, was set up beautifully out of the box and needed about a quarter turn, half turn of a truss rod adjustment to get it right into play after a couple days. It was really great. I liked it a lot. Now, as I want you to hear this guitar, and I want you to understand that um, if you can do, <laughs> let me rephrase, people buy guitars for different reasons. This one really fits a spot in my toolbox where it will come out when maybe it's supposed to rain and I've got to play a gig or something. And I want a quality guitar, but I don't want my Taylor or my Martins out there or something like that. Now, I want an all-solid guitar as well. Let me, let me make that very clear. And that's important. But if you're just out there getting started, you may not want an all-solid guitar. It might be out of your price range. Well, that's where Quartz Core Series has come in. At $600, between $599 and $699 on the different models, the mahogany being the least expensive, you're getting an all-solid construction, fairly well-built guitar with pretty much no setup right out of the box. If you do a setup or take it someplace and you pay the extra money and you get a nice setup on it, you will have a great tone right off the bat. Is it $1,000 more for Taylor 8017E uh, or something like that? Um, yeah, I think you're getting what you pay for there. There's a complete difference in construction and I've never had to take a Taylor back because of workmanship issues, things like that. But this isn't a comparison over that. And the question is, is $1,000 really worth that extra little oomph? It's really a law of diminishing returns at that point, I believe. But for me, heading out there, this is like the beater guitar, take to the beach, throw in the backpack. Well, maybe not the backpack, but you get what I'm saying. And it's for places where I may not want to do, uh, to take out something more expensive. Uh, who knows? That doesn't mean that this is an inexpensive guitar. So where it fits in your toolbox is what I'm getting at. For me, it has one particular duty and it does it very well. I don't think I'm getting necessarily much less by not paying much more, but I do see it in the setup, right? So between the guitars and everything, I do see a difference there. So when people ask, do you get what you pay for? Yeah, you do. And that's my point right there. Is a $600 guitar in it for you? Sure, probably, if, if that's what your jam is. All solid, is it good? Do I like it? Yeah, absolutely. I like it quite a bit. And I think it's a good purchase. I really do. I've emailed Cord. I don't know much about the warranty. So if you get one of these and you might be gigging, you might want to pick up a little uh, warranty through the company that you purchase it from, like Guitar Center's got there, whatever. I did not do that, uh, but maybe not so much either, because if you're going to have a problem with the guitar, uh, you're going to notice it pretty soon or much later. And at which point in time, you're really going to want a lifetime warranty, something like through Martin or Taylor or Gibson. 
where they're going to fix any workmanship issues that ever happened over the lifetime of your guitar. With Court, it simply says, when I look on the website, go check uh, whatever the place where you bought it from. I've emailed them and asked them to tell me a little bit more about that, but I don't know. may never hear from them <laughs> at all. So buyer beware on the warranty side of it. But generally speaking, I think that we're probably going to set up pretty good in a long time right here. But hey, that's up to you. All right, friends, that's going to be it for me today. I hope that you have enjoyed this review of the Mahogany Solid Body Court Core Series Guitar. I really like this thing. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget to use those Amazon links and affiliate links if you'd like to support the channel. I'm Rob. I want to say I'll catch you on the flip side, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.